Okay. This isn't live. Hi, everybody. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, just scrub forward until something starts happening. We'll give the audience a few minutes to get in here because we're safe. so takes a minute or two. No big deal. Chat's working. Uh, I'm having real bad allergies today, so it's going to have to put up with me. Hey, Galena. I'm going to show all my um, Zen tangles that I finished. Hi, Jersey. Thanks for being here, Gail. Okay, people are coming in, so thank you so much. When I come in and there's nobody here, it's almost like, well, I wonder if everybody had stuff better to do today. You just sneezed a whole bunch. Yeah, the grass pollens here, I guess, are ridiculous. And then Robert mowed, which uh, I complain all day, but I won't. I might. What do I know? Hi, Christine. Hi, Linda. Hi, Juanita. She spins as Juanita. You guys know her from um, Dee's. Hi, Val. Hi, Amy. I think I've had too much coffee, Amy. Yeah, see, the mowing, uh, man, it kills me, but you have to mow. Can't live in a pile of weeds. Okay, I'm not buffering. I don't think anybody else is. Haven't heard anything, so, Kalina, it might be on your end. I hope, but, yeah, I don't know. You know, since Dee Dee and I switched over to, um... Streamyarding that whole buffering crap has stopped, which tells me the whole time it was YouTube. So the problem internet has been wonky. Oh, that's such a bummer. Hi, Nancy. <clears throat> so, yeah, when you don't have internet and you have to live well, and I've been making myself stay off the computer for the most part on the weekends. If I want want to look something up, of course, I'll go to the computer. But for the most part, I've been staying off the computer on weekends and just living like to live before there was such a thing as an umbilical cord like your computer. And I have to say, I'm, I'm happier. And news, and I'm happier. <laughs> so, yeah, give yourself a chance to step away and breathe and just live regular life. Ann, how are you? What the hell time is it in Australia? It must be middle of the night there, girl. So today I'm going to do this watercolor, and I'm going to show my Zen tangles when um, Dee Dee comes in. And I'm going to do a show on um, color theory, and we might talk about that a little bit, bit, and I might show a couple of books that I've got that are really good. Um, working. Hi, Kimberly. Um, 3 a.m. Oh my God, girl, girl. You limited your. Yeah, I, 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 there's just something healthy about stepping away from it, you know. So we have signs now. Got outside twice this weekend. Oh, see that. That's what we need to be doing. Like going out and hanging out at a soccer field. That's what we used to do when they go up in the mountains and watch them rock climb and go to soccer games and of course I don't have those activities without kids but I don't know pick up a book um do a painting there's there's got to be better stuff to do I binge watched Gilmore Girls this weekend which kind of is computer but um yeah see it was nice seeing kids run around and I think right now we need that more than freaking ever and see living here on the lake I see people outside just enjoying 
life, whether they're down the road driving golf carts, using scooters, you know, like people are out living. They're not on their computers. And I thought, you know what? Much healthier um, way of life. Hey, CB. Have had really bad asthma. Can't lay down. Oh, I'm sorry, Carrie Ann. I hope you feel better. Hey, Dorothy. Yeah, so being on the makes it a little bit easier. Even if I just sit out on the porch and watch people, you know, having fun in the water, it's just, I think, healthier. I think we're all losing our damn minds is what I think we're doing. Hey, Joan. So anyway, I was saying I was going to do a show on, on, on color. And then I thought, well, I can do that probably and do a painting at the same time. Because um, I showed you the painting that Amy had, um, that CeCe's Creations had done of the leaves. I don't have it out right now. Maybe it's here where I can show it quickly. Um, and we had done one on arches. This is the arches one. And then this was on Canson paper. And Canson's probably not the cheapest paper, but it's definitely more... Um, budget friendly than than arches and I don't know that I noticed it so much um when I was using the ink tents and um the graphitint pencils but then when we did this Primatech paint in the background the difference in the papers was um almost mind-boggling so then Amy's been out, Amy, Wolf Princess, she's my neighbor. For those of you that don't know, she lives two doors down and we hang out together. And um, she had gone to a doctor's appointment. Sorry, I'm adjusting the camera a little bit. Um, and thank you. Um, but she had gone to Tulsa for a doctor's appointment and was going to stay overnight. So she had in Hobby Lobby and bought a Master's Touch paper. And I think she was using Master's Touch paint, but I'm not for sure. And just how different the different paints on the different paper. And she had this theory that she was telling me, and Amy, you might pop in and tell me if I'm just absolutely wrong about this. But that the work better on the cheaper paper. <laughs> and who knows, that could be true. So I looked this morning and I did have a pad of Master's touch paper so I decided okay I'm going to use that and then just because I love them I'm going to use the mission gold paints hey Jan so yeah just to see so that's what got me kind of thinking about that and then this drawing I'm not, not sure that it's good this um, this is a print of one of the irises I painted but I thought I would and this isn't even out of the same book but I would do another iris only at this time but do the same sort of background um because i love this one so much oh my god that color is crazy isn't it that is a lot isn't looking than it is in real life you guys the daniel smith was better on the arches absolutely see that's just it those prim daniel smith primatech paints which are kind of pricey they are the um actual minerals um yeah they just behave so much in the arches paper. Barely awake, no bean juice. Get busy, Jan. It's on your wall, Jersey. Yeah, see, because it looks fluorescent on the camera, right, Jersey? But it really doesn't. So I have a couple extras of these left over, so I might go ahead and do another giveaway. And if this one comes out good, I'll take it to Joplin tomorrow. Oh, I got to tell you guys a funny story. Um, Robert and I have to go to Joplin um, to get a new windshield in my car because um, park my car in the garage and it's a, a real tall two-story kind of garage and Robert hangs like the brooms and stuff two tall broom and stuff like that from the rafters well somehow he hit the broom and it fell off the rafter into my windshield and my windshield and when he was telling Lane about it and Lane is Amy's husband 
and he's like the funniest guy ever. And he he's like me. He he will pretty much say anything, and then we will laugh like hyenas. But anyway, yeah, it was just one of those crazy things that happened. But anyway, when he told Lane about it, Lane said, you were parking her broom and the brakes failed. <laughs> and honestly, we were all sitting outside laughing so hard. Um, yeah, he was parking my broom and the brakes failed. So I have a broken windshield in my car now. But we're going to go running and um, get it fixed. So, yeah. That's funny, right? Yeah. Oh, geez. It, we have we meet usually every day, 3.30 or so. And the guys have some beers, and I just sit out there and yap them. And um, I'm not kidding. There are some crazy topics. We won't mention dwarfs or, or stew. Or there's a whole bunch of... Um, topics that you can't bring up but yeah Amy's husband is a boot. he will definitely make you laugh so anyway I don't know what got me on that oh that if this painting comes out good I'll um take it up to Joplin tomorrow and get some prints made of it so I'm going to go ahead and start color theory and then when Dee, Dee comes in I'll show the Zentangle book it is I thank God every day for neighbors like Lane and Amy they're just genuinely good people. I mean, they're just abs people. They know I like iced coffee, so they bring me iced coffee. And I don't know. They're just such nice. And most of my neighbors I avoid at um, at all costs. Not because I don't like them, just because I don't I don't like people. <laughs> hey, Eileen. Thanks for coming. I, yeah, I feel lucky. But anyway, what I was going to talk about today was color theory or colors, watercolor colors. Just talking because I got this way cool book a long, long time ago. And um, have done absolutely nothing out of it except look at it about a thousand times because it's been out on my couch or out by my couch where I could look at it constantly and um, it's Anna Victoria Calderon Calderon I don't know I probably pronouncing that wrong so I'm sorry but most of you have um, or I'm sure but this book is just so cool because she does different kind of palettes for example this purple one and this so I won't have to read um, but she likes crystals. I like crystals too. Um, yeah, the cover is just fun, right? This is her, the only page in the book that's monochromatic, for example. That is one shade of violet that she has watered down um, and changed the values. So isn't that amazing that that one paint will give you all that and then there's Here's her idea goes, and there's another, here's the other crystal page in browns, and um, I don't know, I think of them as autumn colors. So I'll just flip through it real quick. I think I got this book at Hobby Lobby, but I don't remember, honestly, and I don't remember where I saw it the first time, so. Um, but I actually would love to do, like, a whole book of nothing but this kind of swatching, but I wouldn't um I have one with acrylic Eileen I'm gonna show in a minute you goof um where's my little book oh I can't believe that thing I wouldn't move it would I all right I'm looking little my little watercolor journal that is always right here what the heck oh okay I put something on top of it never mind Sorry, I found it. But I started doing this journal, kind of um, just keeping tr track of different wallers. It started out, I was going to do all the primas, and then I started adding others. Um, but this book is too, too small to do these pages in it, so I need to get, I might get the Square Arteza book. 
Um, but yeah, I want to do a book this, only more like this. And then I just started painting stuff in it too. But this little journal is really, really the one I, when I started gathering up um, watercolors. And there's some drawings I have that I need to watercolor. So this little journal just makes me really, really happy. Hi, Nana. Anybody who's come in? Hi, Tracy. Um, there's nothing in here that was too difficult. Just fun playing with the different colors. Um, I think every time you do it, you learn something. This, this one I've painted, haven't shaded yet. So this I need to really, I'm going to put the thing here. Um, I really need to shade this because these are all, all Mary Angle drawings and I love her um, I need to finish that so anyway all that to tell you that I want to make it using this book you know reading what she talks about and working with the different values of say monochromatic just one color I'm gonna try and do that today with the iris just use one color violet but use different values of one color right um but there's a couple things in here and i almost i'll show you the one but look at these color palettes that she's come with and how she talks in this book about how the colors you choose evoke emotions you know like this color palette if you didn't see this this is just very tropical and bright and it just yeah it just makes you happy right and then she turned it into um like a tropical floral kind of thing. This is rustic farmhouse. And just, you know, changing the colors a little bit by adding in, you can make it feel like autumn rather than tropical. On the skin tone page, okay, I'll try and find if they're on page in here. This one, lavish locks. This is actually hair. Um, but let's see. She does. Here's the skin tone one. Okay. Um, Schmincke's Wand Brilliant Dark and Naples are a nice, a couple of nice watercolor paints I like to use for creamy bases. Both these watercolor cakes are opaque and have white pigment in them. Work wonderfully to lighten watercolor mixes in neutral, in a neutral and warm way. I mix my watercolors here very freely with a large blank fresh pack, using bits of one tone to create another and so on with just a touch of one color in the next. To create the rosy cheek color, for example, I mix it and water to my skin tone base. Um, let me see if she actually does because in the in the very front of the book, she gives you her palette, her inspired palettes. So my guess is um, if you work with her palettes, you would get the skin tone. So I can look further for you, CB, if you want. Hi, Kathy Arbor. But anyway, um, I'll I'll read that more, CB, and see if she ever gives her mixture. Because what she says about it is, um, at a quick glance, this picture picture represents four skin tones until you look close. The color colors range from base skin to rosy cheek tints, lip color, freckles, spots, hairs. The neutral color palette has warm undertones with pigments such as ochre, orange, and cream. You might be surprised to learn that I created most of this palette by mixing shades of orange and blue. There you go. Orange and blue, believe it or not, because blue is orange is comp Implement. This is a way to create warm neutrals that are muted. To the base, I added a variety of browns, which you can make with red and green for darker skin tones, and mixed in base skin. I created what looks like a landscape in this palette, but it, I was actually inspired by close-up photography of skin texture. This palette only is that it relaxes me just to see the colors all together, and I would agree. Um, so, CB in the front of this, she has has that she uses to um, mix 
everything in this book, and I'll we'll get to that in a minute. But I was going to show what I was work on, but I was going to do these kind of swatches, and um, ended up changing my mind. Because <clears throat> I don't know how many of you um, know much about color theory. I mean, there are entire Higher books, books and books about nothing but color theory. So you could spend half a lifetime, maybe, uh, talking with, using, playing with color theory. And one thing I'm really remiss about is having my paints more um, to see what, say, one color can do. This is the one I was going to do. I just love of this um, palette right here and I think these tiles down here are amazing and they're really simple so I love this one and this one I think is really pretty and this one definitely feels oceany kind of to me this is iguana ah oh, where's the one that I that one's really cool and I don't know how many actual colors she used in this oh and a lot of these she's also using the pH I should learn about color theory not a really interesting subject to me unfortunately well <clears throat> I'm not sure that it really ever was for me you know I think we all learned when we we're kids that red and blue make purple um, blue and yellow make green you know we all know the basics of color theory but then when you start using your watercolors and you have to start looking at the actual mixture of the dyes to know that one brown does not equal another in that some colors mix better hi joey um which are the pure pigment colors you know stuff like that if you're ever going to get really good at it i think you have to learn that I, I can't see it. Oh, this is the one. I even marked it. Duh. Um, this one they call Mexican Talavera. And I love this um, Mexican painting, you know, with the Mexican tray over here. I think that would be really, really fun to do. Um, this is called Color Harmony for Artists. How to Transform Inspiration into Beautiful Watercolor Palettes and Paintings. Anna Victoria Calderon. So, I mean, I've looked through this book a million times. Um, yeah. So, but I, I would have to say color definitely does kind of evoke emotion. So, the better you can use color in any way, I think the more pleasing your product is going to be at the end. These look like the Primatech paints. I should try and do this sometime. This one, Pastel Sunrise. How gorgeous is that? If, if you like pastel. So I'm going to try to do this iris today with limited palette. Um, different values of the same color. So yeah, here she talks about the, the different paint she uses and the colors. So that you could conceivably recreate one in this book because she mixes her own palettes so this book I love I think it's really a good one another one that I have um, that I love is the watercolor workshop learn to paint in a hundred experiments I actually did work out of this one on stream one time um, she gives you different things to paint paint and, and then the paint painted on. I don't as a rule paint in my books because um, I then I have to go back and find them and look for them and yeah get at that. So this one is also really good. Um, they talk a lot about color in here, working with color well together. Um, don't know where I got this book either but it's also another book that I really really love and doing the washes stuff like that 
um, mixing colors that you wouldn't normally mix to get results that are pretty amazing and how to make a perfect wash and go from one color to another and get the the values and the um, what I want to say gradation like you want it this was a really really good experiment so I would say if you um, are wanting to get better at something like that the, this book and these experiments are awesome really really fun flip through it quick because she does like in this whole section is about lifting techniques you know putting the color on and then lifting it out this is a great beginner book for those who want to try watercolor exactly Kathy that's what I'm too um because I think all of us who start something like that and, and I'm guilty I, I am the guilty one you want to do a beautiful painting the day you start and the truth is you're probably not gonna if you haven't done some basic experimenting and and just playing with the colors so um that's why I think people who know watercolor probably come to my streams and go oh my god I'm doing but it's watercolor I have to say is such a fun medium it is so fun despite what Eileen will tell you um because your results change all the time depending on paint you're using paper you're using and how much water how much not water doing wet on wet wet on dry you know it's just there's so many things watercolor is hard in my opinion I th I think there are times CB I would absolutely agree with you hi Kat and hi Amy you came in and saying you get so impatient that's Amy just said what I think is my um, hardest thing about watercolor is is when you know you need to let something dry before you can move on that's hard so that's why I come and work on two different sections of a painting at the same time or do two paintings at the same time um what was the name of the book I just showed you the first one I showed was color harmony for artists Anna Victoria Calderon and I'm sure it's available on she's a famous person and then this one is called watercolor workshop an idiot is attempting to reach on your cellular device an idiot is attempting to reach right. you on your cellular device I'm gonna have to talk to him later um I think I got this one at Barnes and Noble so, ooh, cat's going to the dentist. So this book is nice because it tells you what color she used to create these. Turquoise, ultramarine, marine violet, and pink. So you can hopefully try and recreate. I have never painted in the book, so I don't know. Um, I would not call this probably good watercolor paper. So I would do it on some other paper. Even the cheapest watercolor paper is going to be better than the crap they print these books on. Except books that are designed for the watercolor. And then, yeah, like that. Um, Art for Joy's Sake, I think is what it's called. That paper is good. So that whole section was on flat wash. This one is getting the bloom technique. Now, blooms, in my opinion... She uses it as a technique, which is cool. But in my world, I thought blooms were accidents, like go out trying to get a bloom. I don't mind them. Um, but yeah, she uses it as, as a technique. Imagine like this one where she's doing the um, bark on the wood. That Yeah, doing an intentional bloom, meaning you get that hard hard line with water to something that's already dry that's what bloom is um yeah in that case it works beautifully so i think you have to do when a bloom is going to work to your advantage i was going to do this flower too because this was making blooms happen 
automatically. Nice smooth wash. And then you go back in and intentionally change the texture of the petals. And more water. Amy's saying she likes blooms. And I think um I want to be use them to my advantage rather than letting them happen accidentally and then just going, well, I wish I hadn't done that. But yeah, she has you know, like the how to how to do this and how to make a bloom. And it looks to me on this one that she's using watercolor pencils because I can soak. So on this one, if you've got water soluble products, you can do this. You don't have to go buy a watercolor palette and two else. Hey Julie. It's okay. Had to get some mileage in. Uh you make me feel like a slow plug so yeah that's about using blooms to your advantage and like in these i mean it it just looks so cool and i don't know i'm sure she's saying what paper she's using because some paper um blooms better than others i will say that um but your work get dry before you can add more water to get the blooms because in watercolor if your paper is wet the um, pigment is going to run wherever the water, the paper is wet. If it's completely dry, it's going to push it aside. And that's how the blooms happen. If you kind of know that going in, I think you can use blooms to your advantage, right? But yeah, I thought blooms were accidents. You really didn't want them. And here she's talking about ombre effect. Um... I think in watercolor that it's, I don't want to say it's easy, but if you're doing wet on wet and you want the colors to change, it's it's not that hard. So you, that's, I think, anybody can get. Usually any paper I'm using blooms. Well, I, you can experiment and play and not get them. Look at that. Ah. So... Yeah, these are just fun experiments. So this will go in my book with all those other ones from the first book. And then she does wet on wet. You all have seen a hundred times. I like it. Wet on dry um, is ultimately how I try and get the detail I like. Hi, Jane. Um, but today I'm going to go for less detail. I'm just going to do more letting the paint do whatever it wants to do. And then these are the experiments that I showed you that I've already done. So if you want to just play and you're not sure where to start or what to do, learn to paint in 100 experiments. It's a lot of fun. You have zero pressure because there's no end product. They, you don't have to worry your end product is. It's just whatever happens is okay. Hey, Norma. So, yeah. This was fun because those colors should have, you know, just that should have been a muddy mess, but it came out pretty good. But I think when you do that, you'll kind of get a good feeling for um, just how to make the watercolor work for you. I'm on the way to Kathy. Okay, bye, honey. Are you there alone? No. Okay. Then you so don't have to call. Kathy's there and so is the helper, I think. Okay, then you don't have to call me. Bye. Hey, Elaine, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. And then this is the book that I'm actually going to work out of today. This is Color Wheels for the Artist. And this outside color wheel, you turn it down here, is for a watercolor palette. But the truth of the matter is, don't trust the this. Printing inks are not the same colors as watercolors acrylics or anything else so i think they try and depict it as accurately as as they can but it doesn't work and the reason i can tell you that is because like if you hear the colors it just it's not accurate at all but it gives you an idea of what if you wanted a brown you know or whatever that you can get what you want so yeah. And then inside on the back cover, 
is um, the cover, color wheel. But according to, you know, color theory, other than <clears throat> how they factured, yellow and red are still going to make orange. But depending on which colors you pick to start mixing, you get a different shade of orange, right? Been working on journals. Going to get back to watercoloring. So this is the... Um, iris that I'm going to be working on today and see how it's much freer um, and my drawing isn't exactly like theirs and I don't care but yeah I'm going to be doing this so but this whole book is a bunch of experiments um, using limited palette making you mix the colors you need to get what you want at the end right so um I, I, I bought this book a long, long time ago. I haven't done much out of it. I read parts of it when I got it. But I'm really tired and I'm kind of mad at my, myself. I buy the books and I look through them and I love them. I mean, I love them. I love a book about anything. But do I actually go back and learn the material that they're trying to present to me? Not very often. So I'm going to try and be more disciplined rather than buying more books. Using and getting out of the books that I already have what I should be learning right so it's almost like going back to basics but this is a good book too and at least it gives you projects do the colors that you want and then you have to apply that the best you can hi Jilly anybody else I might have missed thanks for being here I appreciate it. so and I'm not encouraging encouraging you necessarily to go out and buy more books because in my mind, I have this, that if I buy the book, I'm automatically better at whatever it is I'm doing, right? That's not the case. You actually have to use the books and get used to them. So, full acrylic section in here. So, um, maybe someday I'll do an acrylic painting. I've never in my life done acrylic painting. My mother was an acrylic painter. And she did fun, fun stuff. My sister-in-law is an acrylic painter. And they used to go to lessons together and all kinds of stuff. I had zero interest. Yeah, it would be great if it worked that way, right? Buy the book and just buy, through osmosis you get to um, absorb what's in there. Okay, so this one, the color mixes that she has for you to use are blue, violet, cadmium yellow, cadmium lemon, and yellow ochre. I hope I have those colors in the mission gold. Let's see. Okay, okay and before I actually have that Dee Dee's here, I'll show my Zentangle book. All right, I know I have the violet. This is my mission gold palette. I'm going to use the bright, bright clear violet for that. What were the other colors I needed? Um, cobalt. I know I have cobalt blue. Yeah. There's cobalt. I'm going to use those two. Um, cad yellow. There's lemon yellow. Hmm. I don't have cad in this. And then yellow ochre. So I do have two different yellows and the yellow ochre. So I'm just going to use it out of this. We're just going to deal with it. Get over it. Right? So I'll move this aside. But that's what I'm going to do. Man, those colors are intense. Maybe I need to push back my color intensity on the camera. But anyway, Dee Dee, if I would show my Zentangle book. And Galena, who may not be here anymore because she was having internet issues, um, had a list of... Um, prompts to draw along with her this month so I decided I was going to do it and I had to go with some additional patterns because they weren't in my book but this is my Zentangle pattern book it's three ring binder I don't know inch and a half it needs to be a bigger one because it's getting too fat hi Riri hi Sharon Deborah Dee Dee if I hi hi um, and I just keep everything Zentangle in here. 
these are the prompts that Galena put out that I've finished. I have not put these on Instagram yet. I should. Let me just show them separately. Two more. So these are, are the ones that I've drawn since the beginning of the month. There's one a day, um, and they all have names. List, I can get it for you. But it, it's been a ton of fun just to sit down and do them. Just to sit down and do them. And these two, all these that are in the um, sleeve, I've already photographed. And then these I did over the weekend, and I haven't photographed them yet. So they're not in there yet. But it's kind of fun to just pick one a day. And this is two and a half by three and a half. This is ATC size. Um, so it's not like you have to do a huge piece of art. Just you can you can get that accomplished sometime over the weekend. And for oh, months and months, I would every evening sit down and pick out one pattern. And if you go to text.com, there's a little alphabet bar across the top. And if you click on that, it lists all the patterns in alphabetical order. So that's what I did, is I would just go pick out one evening and draw it and then organize it in this book alphabetically so you end up really really nice collection easy to find because they're alphabetical um, again these cards are two and a half by three and a half and then for the little boxes that I drew in I just cut myself a little um, template can you guys see that yeah I just cut a little template so I could draw if I wanted six box or somewhere in here is the four box one so I wasn't recreating the wheel over and over and over again so I could get this done definitely in less than an hour I mean I could sit down look up a pattern start the card and finish the card um in absolutely zero time at all. And then some of them I just like so much that I just made a great big drawing of them. And then I tried it in color, and I'm not a fan of Zentangle in color, you guys. I'm just not. This one, the brown one, I actually do like it. it all in brown. And I, I think I did dream. This one I did with a dip pen. This is the one I did with dip pen, Dee Dee. On stream. And I'm sure that's the original a copy. Yeah, that's the original. But then I tried to color one in. Didn't like it. Black and white too. I think the reason I like it so much is because when you do the shading, it just makes it pop. Just It just pops spill my water if I'm not careful so so to me it's really really relaxing to do it and then <clears throat> these pages um, to make it easy just to look quickly for a pattern that I liked and then I made photocopies of these pages um, glued them into this little book so that I have like all my tangles for on the go so if I want to place and take my tangles, you're going to do Zentangles, Frank Tober. Tracy, that's probably a great way to start, honestly. It's Inktober, you know, to get yourself doing something every day. You're going to end up, at the end of 30 days, you're going to end up with something really fun to have. So this is just a little flip book. It folds up um, into a matchbook cover, and I've got all the patterns that I had at the time that I made this um, in this little book. And then I made another one of these um, and gave it away on stream, and I think um, Jen Oz won it. So 
yeah if you want to have a really cool collect of zentangle patterns and there are some really cool ones you guys um just make yourself do inexpensive it's practically free even with the sheet protectors and i'm sorry for the glare i need to be looking down or looking up at the camera but yeah so what else Didi? is that good enough and like to do the j i put picked out patterns from the j patterns there aren't that many j's Well, I think you got thinking about just doing Inktober and you don't want to take on a great big huge project um, until you do an AG video. Oh, you just push that further and further, don't you, Dee Dee? And you guys, I can't credit for any of these patterns. These are patterns that somebody else has created. Um... that I just go on the internet and find and copy. But I do love my book. And I use my book. I use it a lot. So, yeah. Get into Inktober and Zentangle all at the same time. Have and if I did your... Zentangle um, initial last week and you haven't emailed me, you better do it or I'm going to give it to somebody else. But I'm not going to chase you. Two people have not sent me their address. And I'm not in the business of chasing you down. I didn't chase my kids down. I'm not going to chase you. How about that? Janet, check out P-E-E-C. New one on Zentangle. P-E-E-C. I will let down. I've been thinking I should go through and update mine. P-E-E-C. And if you want to see some um, amazing Zentangle work, go Did I get yours, Jane? Let me see. No, Jane, yours is still sitting here. So I don't know where you sent your address, but it didn't come to mind. Hang on, I'll put my... Um... And the other two people that I got their address, they're already in the mail. Please go. Okay, I'll try and see if I can figure it out. Okay, let me see. Okay. Okay, Gina, where did you send the address? I'm going to put in my email address. And I will check again. If you, I would copy and paste that because you have to put the M, period after the M. So, all right, Lizzie Brewer has a whole bunch of Zentangle inspired videos too. Yeah, Pecola was telling me um, this morning that on Mary's Hop this weekend, um, she did some utensils, and I thought, well, now that might be fun, so I'm going to go look that up. But because of my policy of no computer on the weekends, yeah, I, I miss the entire hop. I miss, I miss everything. I will definitely look her up. In fact, I'm going to write myself. Stuff and note. Five minutes after I'm done, I forget everything. I'm hungry and I'm dirty and I have to clean up mess and I forget everything. I shall look that up. So thanks for the uh, heads up. All right, let's get our palette together. I could have done this earlier, but I didn't. 
She has an entire playlist of Zentango. Okay, I will definitely be checking her out. I've watched her in the past, I think. I know as soon as I turn it on, I'll know if I did or if I didn't. Shouldn't need a huge amount of paint for this. And then I'm just going to make up the background. You're welcome, Dee Dee. I'll, I'll think about doing a video and slapping it up on Instagram. I'm not big on doing that, but I know Dee Dee. She's really, if, if Dee Dee wants you to do something, she's worse than a three year old. Did you do it yet? Did you do it yet? Did you do it yet? Are you going to do it? Are you going to, do you have time today? Can we do it now? She's relentless. Relentless. But she does it to herself, too. You know, like, you can tell. I was amazed this morning watching Dee Dee Split. I told her this just a few minutes ago. I don't know how many years I've watched Dee Dee, and I've watched her color all those um, pages in those color books. That girl is so prolific she'll ask politely she will harass my ass until i'd rather do answer the phone the next time all right so i've got the blue and the purple i'll pick out a couple of yellows which i should first before i got blue in the brush Thanks, Jean. Check as soon as I um, get off the phone. I'm going to try and go to the post office tomorrow. See? I didn't get all, all the blue out of the bird. Oh, there's a green yellow. A huge amount. To reach you on your cellular device. An idiot is attempting to reach right. you on your cellular device. What do you want? Oh, okay. I'll get that done right now. She's she's already starting, you guys. This is Dee Dee telling me. Get it written down so you don't forget. You think she won't be relentless? I'll do, have it done by dinner time tonight, Dee Dee. I won't eat until I do it. How about that? Crazy woman. But she's right to tell me to write it. All right. Zentangle. video. All right. It's written down, Dee Dee. Now if I can just read it later. <laughs> My list of things to do is really, really long. Really long. She's a nutcase. All right. I should already had this done. Oh well, now you guys are getting an idea how long things really take. All right, thanks Tracy, thanks Gina. Jane, I already did yours. Yours is on the should be there. I don't know in the next couple of days. I can't remember exactly when I sent it, but it's on the way. It took a couple days because I had to go get the international stamp. So that's what was holding me. Last color, they say, is yellow ochre. So, so this is pretty palette here. And then the colors for the background, I'll pick after I see um, how the painting itself comes. I'll probably add some red and more blue to the background. So we'll see. 
and like I said, this is Master's Touch Paper, which is Hobby Lobby brand, um, inexpensive. Don't, don't know how this is going to turn out, but we're going to see. All right, I'm going to test my papers, my colors real quick to see what their color is right on the palette so I know if I have to go lighter or what. I responded to your email. Well, I hope I didn't send the wrong. <laughs> God, wouldn't that be ridiculous if I sent the wrong. Oh, I have to check now. If I sent the wrong initials to the wrong person. Okay, Genus is the G. Jane, okay. So it's Gina and Jane. And then, okay, yeah, it's Gina and Jane that I have sitting here. So never mind, Jane, yours, um, yours is sitting here, and they are the correct initials. I was going to say, God, if I sent just to, like, somebody else, I'll be so mad at myself. But I would do something like that, so that's I'm better if I check. You got a clue how hard it is to be me. All right, there's the colors. They're pretty. If this comes out right, this could work out really good. All right, and I'm going to have to go get some new clean ones. All right. Thanks, Jane. If you send it to that email, I should get it. And I have been really a lot, lot better about check mail for one week, one week only. Okay, I'm psyched to get this done, and I hope it comes out good so I can get prints of it made tomorrow. Because that to get prints made. Hi, Sherry Ann. It's old brain. It is. You know what it is, though. Most things I just don't care much about, honestly. I, you can't get excited. Life is too short to get too excited about stuff. All right. Right. so I've got all this stuff I did the sketch itself if you weren't here or if I didn't say it I don't know if I even said it um, I am used did the sketch with graphitint pencils and if you're not familiar with those I've shown them before I love them so much they are water soluble graphite pencils with pigment added so it's a small palette they're gonna start selling these in pan and I will them. I don't care how much I don't want to spend money I will be buying them um, so this sketch is going to still exist after I but it should be somewhat muted so yeah I'm looking forward to it so let's look at the book and see what she says first and we're going to be working wet and wet initially and then we'll switch over so I've already already done the scaved you the agony of that and then she starts talking about use your violet um, and just start when you're drawing my drawing is not exact like theirs um, I did it kind of in a hurry while I was watching Dee Dee this morning it's hard to on here and looking over at what Dee Dee's doing because I was really enjoying watching her flip of her old art okay so one mistake I always make when I'm watercoloring and I don't know it's like a brain block or something I always start like over here in the right hand corner where that's exactly where my hand has to go later in the painting so today I'm mindful and try not to not do that right so I'm gonna start over here and all I'm doing initially Actually, is doing clear water. That's why I went and got clean water because I had contaminated my other, and I needed um, 
clean water. And don't worry if you start seeing the, the sketch start to dissolve and disappear a little bit. I'm not going to. And I'm going to try and do this real watery. And not too much detail like I always do. But you want the paper. And you can tell how wet your paper is by the sheen. And I don't know if you guys can see it. You probably can't. You can kind of tell how wet your paper is. And I don't know that I've ever painted on this Master's Touch paper before. So, yeah. And I'd rather start light and then go back and add color and I should have read what she said so I don't have to stop at this point and start reading but She said, start applying color, color to the petals using the wet and wet technique. First, apply a wash of clean, clear water to one petal only. Remember to apply the water accurately in the pencil lines you have drawn. Then using round brush, round brush, drop on a strong mixture of pure violet to the wet paper. Work around different parts. Catch one petal at a time, applying color as you go. This is better than concentrating on applying color in one area only. You may find that you end up using too much and have to start over. So she just says, move around the painting and apply the color. Is that one? Yeah, this one has purple up here. I'll start here next. So I'm going to try is not going to be easy for me um, to just leave that whatever happens happen. Let me add more dark down here. There's quite a bit of water there. Now this, letting the paint run by lifting the paper, I really like that. So, And move over here, sorry. Because <laughs> I was get, about ready to get myself into the same problem I have where I end up putting my hand in it. If I was going to add a different color at this point, I would have washed my brush a little bit better. But since I'm I'm using the same part. I don't really care.
Remember, watercolor dries lighter than um, it looks while you're working with it. So even though this looks really purpley, it probably will dry much, much lighter. Anybody else I missed who might come in while I was putting paint on? And I'm just kind of glancing at the book. Um, I'm not do necessarily doing what she did. I'm not going to worry about it because my drawing isn't anyway. So um, it, it's very similar, but it's not the same. So. probably should have um, plugged in my heat gun but one thing I I think is um, get better results with watercolor if you let the pigments dry naturally I don't know where looking at hers um, looks like she's got two different colors of purple but I don't think she does And the reason I'm jumping around is mostly um, so I can come back and work at different parts of the painting. See, I can't paint anything next that I've already painted because, remember, the paint will run where there's water. So that's why I'm jumping around and seems like I'm going crazy, which I probably am, but that's a whole whole different top whole another day My paper had kind of, has kind of dried out, so I'm going to re-wet it. In arches, um, your paper will not dry out that quickly. It is really good because it's cotton at holding your water. But so far, I'm not unhappy with this master's time. Touch, um, paint. I'm really not. You're not paint paper. It's buckling a little more than um, arches, but yeah, it's it's in the water and moving pigment nicely, so.
gets quiet in here, doesn't it? Oh, I'm going to add. Yeah, that's the only drawback I can see right now for my initial feeling about this master's type bar is that it does, the paper does dry a um, little bit more quickly. I'm going to come back and do that one later. A lot of blue in this. Oh my God, Dee Dee. <laughs> you want me to stop and do it right now? I, I think for me too, Norma, I think that it's such a, a big, big learning curve. <laughs> for real. Um, but I just think it's so much fun to play with. I mean... You never maybe feel like you really got a handle on it. But I, I will say that I do feel like every time um, I play with it, I feel like I learn something. I'm not sure if it's permanent learning or if it's just, I think, oh, okay, I get that now. And then I come back later and it's like, okay, you didn't really get that. That, I think. And I, I truly believe that if I did this exact same painting um, on arches, just the way the water works with the paper, I'd get a whole different result, you guys. I'm almost certain of it. But for playing, having this inexpensive option is pretty nice. 
And if you're in the States and you have Hobby Lobby, you know that about every other week, Master's Touch product is 50% off. Thank you, Norma. Did K-Bird come in? Hi, K-Bird. Just letting the paint run for a minute so it's not all one matte color. That's pretty dry. Oops, I should have erased. Oh, well. I have a line there that I don't want in the finish, but hopefully I can cover it because it's a graphite. Like the um, the lines that you're seeing um, are the graphitant and hopefully won't be that obvious when this is all done. Um, the gra the vertical lines um, I did with graphite so that they wouldn't disappear so I'd know where my divisions were for the background. Okay, that's kind of the base color in now. Um, all right, I'm going to have to plug in because I don't want you guys to have to wait. Um, Just moving that pigment around down there. I'm going to give it a second to absorb while I have some coffee and I'll read the chat. Watercoloring to me, quilty, is very relaxing. It drives Eileen crazy, um, but to me, this is really relaxing and I don't like that big there, so I'm going to have to break that up. Yeah. The water with the different papers is definitely changing, but that's why I, I try a lot of different papers. Um, this Master's Touch is probably, well, no color it paper um, that I got off Amazon is the least expensive. Um, and the thing about it is it buckles terribly. I mean, like, this is laying pretty flat so that my water is, I can kind of manage where the water is going. That paper, it, it buckles so bad that you can't control the water. Like, for a second coat of water, you're screwed because you can't control it at all. Hi, B. All right. This can dry down here and I'll go work up here more. So she just basically tells you to get um, your base color on, you know, let it go where it wants to go. This is probably a little bit darker than hers, and that's fine with me. And then she starts introducing some other colors. She decks, I think I'm going to save the yellow for last. I'm going to do um, the blue next. What about bee paper? I like bee paper, Barbara. The problem with bee paper is it's hard to get now. I don't know. When Eileen enabled us to buy all the bee paper, the next when I ran out and went back to buy it, I couldn't find it. But the other day I was going through my journals and I found a journal that I have made with bee paper. So I do have some bee paper. Um, but yeah, to buy those individual six by nine sheets. And I haven't checked lately. Lately, um, you ordered some bee paper from Amazon because for a while you couldn't get it. Amy, see if you actually get bee paper because when I ordered the bee paper, they fulfilled it with something different. It was UTech. It wasn't UTech, but it was something like that. So if you get bee paper, I will 
actually order stuff you won't even have to share with me because I will absolutely order my own. Because I do like the bee paper. It takes water really, really well. Oh. All right. So now we're. this is going to be the real test of the Master's Touch. Um, God, I'm, I'm so tempted. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. Just script bee paper so I'll let you. Okay. Yeah, Amy, because when I ordered mine, I ended up giving you some of that paper. I did not like it that well. She shows the yellow next. I'm going to go ahead and do the yellow next. What the hell? Hopefully my brush is good and clean. Going for the yellow. We can add the blue. I didn't get my brush real clean. That's really strong. Can you guys see the different yellows that I added? Um, they're really looking pretty. Really, really pretty. Oh, Kat, I'm sorry. I showed three different books, Kathy. Um, this one is Color Wheels for the Artist. It's got a watercolor wheel in it and an acrylic and picked one of the exercises which was a flower which i love so thanks val what are you gonna google b paper oh b paper is just um a name brand val yeah it's just a name i'm gonna work upside down for a minute name brand and I don't know where it's made but it I I actually really like it and you know another thing is too because I only had the B paper in the journal which I've not used that much and um, six by nine format when you tape that six by nine format down you know you don't have as much area to buckle it, it could be just the size of the paper that made me like it so much. Yeah, now Eileen's sitting there making crap up. If you want to put a link in paper, um, they show it on Amazon whether or not you're actually going to get that. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know.
you bought a roll of the B paper. I didn't. Um, because, yeah, I didn't want the hassle of, because I know me, and that would probably not be something I was really good at. All right. Just checking. I have to let this yellow really, really dry before I go back in, but that's no big deal. And that's it's all dried now. I have to um, to worry about it. So I guess that's a good thing. At least dries quick for stream painting. Now, one color she didn't put into that palette was a green for the stem. So, what's she going to do with the stem? Oh, she mixes the blue and the yellow. Okay, because then I'll say. Thank you, Eileen. I did too, Barbara. Demand made it go up. If you can even get it. See, that's the thing I'm wondering is, are you really going to get it? Because I did order some and I did not get bee paper. And the crap they sent was garbage. It was really bad. Did not like it. And I could have returned it because I think the receiver or something did. They had substituted this um, and had altered the price as an equivalent, but it was not an equivalent. And I realized that they could do that. Like, I think the price increased too. Because I thought we paid like eight bucks for that initial. paper that we and I had bought it twice because I used it to cut up for the um, my swatches Just adding some more of the little bit darker yellow on the edges. Um, I use cold press. That's because it's got more texture to it. Um, I have some hot press, and I think you can probably do just as good on the hot press, but I've always had better results on the cold press. Oh, yeah. Now when I go and search to buy, um, I just look for the cold press. I do like drawing on the hot press better though. 
But yeah, I would say test them both and see what you prefer. I do like the cold a little bit better. Now on these, I don't know why that she stayed away from the edges. Oh, and I can't paint down in there yet. See, that's the problem is you've got to be patient. I'm going to do more purple and blue and that yellow is still wet. So you can't do that. So I'll start down here on this one. And hopefully we're going to see how well this paper handles getting wet than once um, and whether or not it starts lifting. That's the problem you're probably going to end up having. Oh, this seems like it's doing well. Now that surprises me to that second um, coat of water and allowed me to put color on top. So to go master's touch, I did not expect that. I expected a little bit of a problem. And I think the edge is completely dry too. So um in this case, I sh should not get anything like that because um, it wasn't still wet. And I like that. I was able to smooth out that edge that hard edge really nicely. Wow, that surprised me. That, 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 than I expected it to. It's looking much, much bluer on the camera than it is in real life, but that really surprised me. I did not. I can't work on either any of those because they're um, still wet. But I can start defining this. In fact, I'm going to do it with my pencil first. Because I've cut my drawing.
and that will dry much lighter it is over here i hope we're gonna find out i'm gonna add i think no i'm not i'm gonna do it just like they say never mind i was gonna stick my big nose in where it didn't belong should stay away from that anyway but i'll just not paint up to the edge That space right there looks really weird. You may not be able to figure. Thanks, Sharon. That is a pretty purple, isn't it, Tracy? This is the Mission Gold um, Bright Clear Violet is what they call it. And it is a really pretty purple. I don't have a really pretty purple. Um, I bought a def couple different ones in the M grams. I don't think I've hit yet on this pretty a purple in the M grams. I'll come down and do that later. And as the paper dries, you can put in um, like localized color. No, Sharon, they're not all um, Mission Gold. I, I fall back to those a lot because I like them a lot. Um, but this palette is the Mission Gold. And then that wooden palette that I have out a lot, that combination of Daniel Smith and um, M. Grams. I don't know about having a favorite. Do I have a favorite? Um, well, like I just said, I like purple in this Mission Gold. Um, I like, um, overall, probably, I would say M. Graham, my absolute favorite. But I like playing with all of them. I really do. Now I'm going to try and keep color more maybe localized. Let it spread a little bit, but let it be more local. Today I'm using nothing but Mission Gold. I could have gotten the cadmium colors out, but I just didn't.
because the um, the book actually called for cadmium yellow, but I don't have it in the mission gold, so I just chose the yellows that they have. Starting to get a little bit more colorful, right? I'm going to paint upside down here at the top now. Because all she did for this second coat was really go and add more color. And I think I'm using more um, stronger value than she did, but that's fine. Because the background, I'm definitely going to do that. I'm tickled with the way this is handling the water on this second coat. I really am. that the way that's working so I'm going to leave it maybe try and move it a little bit that this right in here is getting pretty buckled so but that's it's just the paper all right all right the yellow is dry enough now You do not mean to add that much water. What are those? spaces I have to look at that because that's really baffling me now why did she leave those white spaces i 
I guess they just stay white. Go figure. Bye, Jane. Have a good afternoon. Bye, Quilty. I get so quiet when I do this. But I like doing it. Add more purple. So one thing, if you're using this master's touch paper, what I would say is you're gonna hack a little faster than you might be used to. Um, Cause it does dry out quick. But otherwise, I'd say the results so far are surprisingly good. Not saying the painting is great, but the paper is beho behaving better than I expected for sure. So for practice paper, do not be a master's touch. And I think I actually bought this paper, you guys, when they were having that clearance or whatever. Or I definitely bought bought it on state full price for it I know that so um yeah don't be afraid of it. it it's not horrible and the only reason I got it out today to play with was because Amy said she had gotten some bye lady bye Dee Dee I'll talk to you later some detail in here because I think it's a good time to do it. I hope. While well, that other stuff's drying. Those are looking real. All right, let's work on this part in here. And then I might add and do the background because I've been on two hours, which I can't hardly believe.
I'm going to have a hard time probably defining this part of the painting, especially with only an hour left. I'll let you guys help me pick out what background is, because I can go back and do whatever little bit of detail or whatever I want on this later. I think um, the artist in the book was using a lot more water than I am because she's got a lot more drops or I just don't let the drops happen like she does. That's probably it, if I had to guess. Iris remind me of the ones that were around your mailbox. At one time I did have these kind of iris around my mailbox. But then the city people decided that the flower bed around my mailbox was a dog lavatory. I um, took the entire garden out. The blue is cobalt blue, number one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and mix. Let's see. No, no I'm going to go ahead and do this part. No, I have to let that dry. I also had um, really pretty, if you remember, the old-fashioned dahlias. Those were the most beautiful flowers. Um, But yeah, the, the city people pretty much ruined that. And when I say they used it for a dog lavatory, I'm so not kidding. It was so discouraging. I'd sit here in the kitchen and I could watch them walk their dogs right into my garden. And they didn't care. Did not care, even a little bit. So, and you wonder why badmouth the city people a lot? I've had 20 years experience. Some of them, well, they've gotten better bags, and I may have told this story before, but I'll tell it again. And Elaine can verify this. Um, one day we were in Mary, little Mary, and I used to drink coffee every morning of our lives. And when it was summertime or spring or whatever, we went on Mary's back porch. Well, there was a, 
a fence there that had slats in it that we could see through, right? And so one day out there, and I know Elaine remembers this, <laughs> and this woman came out with this big dog, walked it out of the gated community, clear across the street into the, the community yard that was over at Mary's house, and let her dog take a great big dump to turn around and walk down the street away from it. So I ran into Mary's house and got a, a Walmart bag, you know, and sat and waited out there for the, the woman to come back. And when she came back, I ran out and um, handed her the bag and told her she'd pick up her dog crap. And she acted like she's all offended, you know, but she did pick over, lean over and pick it up. Well, it was like, I don't know, a day or so later, I'm sitting here <laughs> in my kit out on the main road, my little breakfast Nick does, looks out on the main road, and the same woman, same dog, and her husband start walking down the street and walked in, let the dog take a crap. In my so I let her and her husband walk on down the street and watch for them to came, come back. Then I run out of my house to the same woman <laughs> and hand her husband a Walmart bag and say, "You, my, you yours at home or whatever, you know." And she said to me, "What are you, the dog shit committee?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah." That's exactly what I am. So if you wonder why I hate the city people, that's exactly why I hate the city people. And I'm sure they do that to their neighbors in the city, you know, where you've got... And we're an organized community, you guys. I mean, it's a road out there. There's houses. Um, the land across from me is um, a great big field. And I don't think anybody would care if they let their dog crap over there will hate it because it'll get in his equipment but he'll clean it up anyway oh yeah Robert and I did that to a lot of different people but yeah they decided that I'm is attempting to reach you on your cellular device dog crap committee over An here is attempting to reach you on your Jamie's really trying to get a hold of me um so Yeah, I don't have a problem taking a bag out to them. People are just funny that way, you know. And I saw something, well, I've, I've noticed it before this weekend. And we're after the holiday weekend now, so we won't have any people um, coming, which is good. I might learn to like them again before next summer. But it's almost like there's rules in the city, but you come to the lake and there's no rules. Like you can drop your trash anywhere. And I saw it the other day and it really, really bothered me. Um, but like if their kids are, and this is what I saw that bothered me. Um, it's a kid on a motorized scooter. And these are all fairly well-to-do people, okay? Um at least are. I mean, they can afford a second home here at the lake, so I, I figure they're fairly well-to-do people. Um, this little guy, I don't know, and, and I know kids probably look younger to me now than they used to, blah, blah, blah. But there was a little guy, he couldn't have been any more than seven years on one of those motorized scooters. Um, I mean, absolutely zooming down. On this road at least 20 miles an hour maybe 30 I mean it, it's a nice little scooter that guy has he's out there riding that thing without a helmet and it think of when um, my husband was in the hospital um, his doctor of course was a neurosurgeon he showed up at the hospital on Christmas Day and came in you know to check on Jim and I said what are you doing here on Christmas you know like you're not the on-call 
and he said he'd been called in for emergency surgery for a parent who had gotten their kid a four-wheeler and the kid rode it of course crashed it rolled it over no helmet on that kid and I don't know, the outcome doesn't look good. And that's all he told me. But you could see the just utter disgust in his eyes. He said, that if you're going to something like that, at least make sure they're safe. And that's what I thought when I saw this little kid on his scooter. You know, it's, it's a great toy. Well, it's not a toy, for God's sakes. But, I mean, it's a great gift. But would you do that in the city? Would you do that? in the city you wouldn't and that's what makes me mad is these people think the rules are for the city i guess you come out here and there's no rule you want to throw your beer can in somebody else's yard get after it you don't have to worry about that that's the sort of stuff that ticks me off is they're just absolutely inconsiderate they seemingly just don't care they don't care about you as a neighbor they don't even care about their own damn kids throwing stuff in the lake ultimately washes up on my bank that's the sort of stuff that annoys the hell out of me rules are yeah well no rules are for thee not for me yeah like pants if somebody else did that but yeah Patricia told me a lady bought and moved into my cottage yeah you heard that too haven't met him i don't go over to the cottages anymore i don't i think maybe it's just too sad for me i don't really know but i don't go over there i did talk talk to pat the other day though well the other day who knows it could have been a month ago but i had heard that too elaine that somebody bought your cottage all right let's see where we're at Mine does not like theirs, but I'm liking mine. Hers is much freer, and you can see more of her lines. So I might have to do this again. No common courtesies. That's really true. Hi, Carla, by the way. Um, yeah, people are funny, funny creatures. They don't seem to care. All right, I'm going to mix some blue and some yellow. Yellow. Let's make the green. Is it which yellow? The darker of the two. And you know, I I feel bad even talking about it because really, is this arms we've got in the world right now? It's not. So for me to sit, be sitting here whining about having to pick up dog crap, that's it's actually just really silly but still it's the little things that aggravate me you know I mean it, I think if we all, all treated each other we want to be treated the world would be a much better place right I'm mixing myself some green here hopefully it's going to turn out to be be a pretty green yeah but they're just these are really not first world problems little aggravations okay there's my green it's not going to show up accurately but it's a really pretty green goodness for that I'm going to try and get the stem in um, and then I can go put details and stuff in later it starts with dog crap well see that that's just it and actually it's much better now believe it or not than it used to be I mean, used to be I'd get up in the morning after a holiday and my yard would be full of trash. Um, well, one morning, 
we, Robert and I were in bed, well, one morning, it was middle of the night, morning for us, um, and we hear a crash out in front, and we heard a noise, didn't know what it was, actually, but so Robert got up and looked out the window, and he said, and I have raised flower beds out in the front of my house, and there's a, a round one out in the middle of the front yard that has a fun stuff in it. And um, look out the window, and a car has literally drove, driven into my yard, went up into his bed, and then got itself stuck because it's higher than the wheels of their car, right? So, Robin went out. They're absolutely drunk as a skunk. And so, Robert wouldn't let them move their car. They did. I, they might have knocked a rock loose or something. I don't remember what the actual damages were. Um, but we made them leave their car there overnight so that we wouldn't turn the drunk drivers loose on the public, right? A paintball gun. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. I would love to sit in here and shoot paintball guns. At people. Okay. People are just funny, funny creatures. I just added a little bit of blue to the green, and I'm going to put it on one side of that stem. Kind of indicate a shadow. But do it while it's wet so it kind of spreads. I like it that way. You guys are going to say, God, you're such a whiner. I'm back here. She just whines all the time. Oh, yeah, you can't believe it. You know how many times my mailbox had been knocked down? They used to knock my mailbox down at least twice a summer. And then Robert put, <laughs> dug a big hole and built a metal one and put it in concrete in the ground now if you hit my mailbox you're gonna total your car or kill somebody I really hate this down here I've got that I like the colors though the colors are really really pretty but I have to say it's a nice area and we really do not have much crime or anything. So for me to be whining is ridiculous. Redonkulous. I'm not sure if they intended for that to stay white, but I don't want to. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of purple in there. I'm going to add, make it darker because it'll make yellow really pop out. All right. What do you guys suggest for the background colors? And this is by no means done 
but it's almost impossible to finish a whole painting, at least for me, maybe not for others. I will keep working on it tonight, though, because be luck I'll be able to um, take it and get some prints made if it turns out halfway decent. Leave that like that for now. Would Sharon say you are on one side of your property and rat on the other and start sh shooting at one another in between? Oh well, <laughs> we would do that, Sharon. Actually. It, I am Norma, honestly, and that's why I actually feel like, like a whiny baby right now because I am really, really fortunate to live in a really, really beautiful area. I mean, and, and I know that. Oh, I forgot that one down there. Hang on. It is a beautiful lake area, um, and I am fortunate. No doubt about it. That's why I say for me to sit around and whine about it, I ask it. Okay. I think I'm going to do the upper part with the blue. The problem we're going to face is um, winter's coming on. So all, not all, but most of the local businesses close. So spray it with water, add salt, and call it done. Well, that's what I'm going to do on the background, Eileen. On this background bear, I'm going to um, do the salt and add some gauze to it as well. Might have a little too much water. But I think I'm gonna do um I think I wanna add and I probably should wait and completely dry before I start dinking with the background, right? But yeah, I want to do the the salt and the, um. I actually had thought about doing magicals on the background. That might be really fun. It looks nice for the background abstract foliary color. Okay, let me show you like on the background of the other iris. Wait, she just painted, dropped in and used salt, um, gauze. This is not, let me go see if I can find the original one. You guys know where from. Well, I, right here, let me show you the book. This is a different book, but I love this woman's backgrounds. And I still want to do a bunch of paints, but too, because they're just so, so gorgeous. This is watercolor making your mark. You've seen it a thousand times because I love it so much. But I love the way she does her backgrounds. They're more mixed media. Um, and on where she has, like this, where you've got the, the lines or the different sections with the dippers and then she used gauze and salt and I don't know she's used all kinds of different things on these backgrounds and that's what I was going to do on this one um, and I obviously have to do complementary colors right but 
I think the the red, pink red would look really good with the purple. So do the center of it, kind of the pinks and the reds, and then move out to either blues and greens um, on the outsides. Do you want to try magicals? Well, I wonder if I should just leave this and go ahead and finish it this week while you guys are out doing it, which means I can't make a a print tomorrow, but no big deal. Um, and try and use magicals next time. Because, see, now I want to start doing details, and that was not, not the idea, but um, the backgrounds are great, but hold the damn flowers. Oh, my God. Does it matter if it's a flower or a robot, Eileen? <laughs> I like yelling at her. Like, um, tape off one section at a time. All right. Tell you what, we've got time. It's a little wet in a couple of sections, so let me go ahead. I'm going to dry it really quick. I don't know what the end of the plug is. Let's just try it. What the hell? If I ruin the painting, does it really matter? It's it's freaking paper. And it was still fun doing it. Even if I wreck it at this point. Let's try one section of Magicals. Okay. You want to? Let's do it. I hope this isn't too crazy, but we're going to find out. Either it's going to work or not. We're going to find out. All right, here's the magicals. Let's start with this big section over here because it's, it's going to be the driest for sure. I need to go get clean water too. All right. Let's choose some colors. I was wanting to do reds kind of toward the center, I think, and then use the blues moving out. So, what are the favorite color blues? I obviously like the dark, dark blue. We're going to use those for sure. Oh, blues and browns. Blues and browns, what do you think on the edges? That's Mad Hatter. That's got some glitter in it. All right, Eileen. Speak up or shut up. You can't win in that. What exactly are Magicals? Magicals are sold by um, Lindy Stamp Gang, and they're powdered pigment. And um, add some green. Okay. They're powdered pigment, and so wait till you see them. You'll just go, holy crap, mads are amazeballs. See, I don't have great blues. What's that one? That one? No, I want a brighter blue than that. All right, we're going to use the, the dark blue. <clears throat> if I can find it. Anyway, they're powdered pigment. Some of them have shimmer. Some of them do not. Um, okay, there's the, the dark blue. And then, should I add, I'm just trying to think what kind of green, because I wouldn't mind blue and green. All right, I'll add the green over here. The 
Green's Madicals are a little, I'm thinking this Lush Lime, do a lime green, the blue, and some little bit of brown. What was that brown that I really liked? Um, okay, it was this one. It's kind of a light brown. All right, we're going to try this. Do you have gold? I do. Are you kidding me, Eileen? I have grab a guy gold. Yeah, baby. And then, um, Tra Peterman, um, sent me some of the shimmery colors. So I've got like bronze and other shimmery colors. I'm not sure this is a painting, however. So let me think how I want to. this because I'm going to add the water. I've got to get clean water for one thing. All right, we're going to try this. We're just going to try it. All right, I'm thinking gold. Would it be better to add the gold? I walked over to the sink without the jar. Numbskull. And I'm not going to be able to do the whole background because this I definitely will have to try before I, um, I'm not sure how I'm going to protect that middle part is the deal here. The dealio. But I got some scrap paper here. Not long enough. That's all good paper. I don't want to use that. Uh, here, this is going to be fine. All right. Yeah. Okay. Time to make a mess. Yeah. Let's see how we do with this mess. Let me find a brush that I can get some water down. Um, I'm going to paint it wet. Okay. Magicals are magical because the powdered pigment, as it hits water or water hits it, it just like bursts into color. Um, so that's what makes it really uber cool. Um, I don't have much room here. These are in my way. I think I'll move my, my watercolors. Oh my God, this is going to be crazy. Okay. So let's, because I like the, I want the delineated divisions. I like that. And I can go and make them more pronounced. Later, and I'm, I'm going to have to work kind of quick. CB, I'm not going to get carried away, I promise you. And I'm going to leave the paper pretty darn wet. Oop, didn't clean that brush very good. But the thing is, you'll never know. Maybe I can um, use that makeup brush to brush the magicals off. There's, what do you think? I don't know. This is a crazy freaking idea, Eileen.
Here we go. That's to keep the magicals off where I don't want them. I'll do the green first. Yeah, I know. I'm going to spray it, CB. Going to try and get gauze on it while it's still... Um, I need to cut the holes bigger on this brown. Is your gauze cut and ready? Yeah, it's just here, CB. So is the um, salt and everything else. It's just, I have a bunch in this little texture that I use. Before I put the gauze in, though, Alright, the nice thing is it didn't go over like I want it to. I got a little bit on the flowers. I'm wondering. Right now if I could pick up a little bit. If it gets where I don't want. Yeah, I'm going to cut that in half. I've got it pretty well soaked, so it's not like it's out really, really fast, you know? But I was thinking if I want, I could go in and... Um, Add some watercolor if I want it more solid, you know. And this may be the total wrong place to do this. More, more green. All right, we'll try more green. And if I really wanted to do this right, run in at this point and put frisket. I could have let the whole thing dry, put frisket on the parts that I had um, painted. But yeah, we'll just see. I may not like this at all. I may end up kicking Eileen's ass because of it. All right, there's more green. And at this point, after this dries, um, I mean, I could go in and stencil and anything else I want, you know, make it, it truly mix.
I'll go back in. I might try and pick that up and then I can go back in with purple later and see how that works. I don't know how it's going to work, honestly. All right, and then I'll add salt and we're just going to have to let that dry. What's frisket? Frisket is masking. Um, and it's kind of like, um, I would say rubber cement. If you've ever used rubber cement, um, it's kind of that consistency where you, it, it's a little bit thinner, but you paint it on and then, then after it, you can watercolor, do anything you want on top of it. And it doesn't let the paint and whatever penetrate. So, um, you can keep white air when you're doing like a big wash or something yeah you can leave white areas white or like i could put it on top of this and keep the flowers um their true colors um and i think it would work that way right now it looks a big mess <coughs> excuse me Excuse me. Um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens now. Some of the green did not get completely dissolved. Um, that's kind of a danger. Danger, danger, danger. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go back in and, and define these flowers now in here in the center man that's going to be really hard i may have to rethink that and actually do the frisket thing i really may have to do that thank you thank you carla you right, guys i may not finish this until next monday and i might go ahead and just paint the flower with skit so we can go ahead and do the background magical and see if this is even a technique that's worth the time and effort can you use something else um actually i Eileen, Eileen, what um what did you tell lori to use if you don't have frisket i would try rubber cement rubber cement is really inexpensive um and you can just it turns green, and when you rub it, it just rubs off like a booger. <laughs> I don't know how else to uh, um, describe. I'm not sure I like that. I hope it dries a lot lighter. I liked it. I might have ruined rubber cement works. Okay, yeah, see, that's what I was going to say. I would think you could use rubber cement. The thing about rubber cement is is because of its consistency it's going to be harder to um to do detailed areas where frisket i'll show you consistency of masking fluid um it's a little easier to paint and use oh i know i have some up here god i've been lightheaded today i wonder what that's about because my head's full of snot I imagine okay this is um liquid frisket and this is kind of old, old honest um I don't want to use it with my good brush when if you're going to use this use a crap brush in fact the end of a brush I'll move this out of the way because that's going to take a while to dry now you guys <clears throat> Let me crackle a piece of paper here. All right, this is actually much, much thicker than it norms. Normally, frisket will run, and this would take a while to run. This is old, 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 and I ha I don't very often use it, honestly. Um, I it's just kind of a pain in the butt. 
but use. Don't want to use my good brushes. Now well, here, I'm going to add water to this. Dry pretty quick. So you can see how it will um, rub right off. But yeah, you might have to risk it. I obviously need new frisket, or I'm not going to buy any because I don't use it that often. And um, yeah, it, it is like a bug reel, right? <clears throat> I'm going to switch this real quick. And I'm pretty much done here, so if you guys got other stuff to do, don't hang around. Um, because that color intensity is key. All right, that's better. Should have done that two hours ago. Eileen, I don't know how I'm going to like that was on the background. I might just go ahead and repaint the whole damn thing. All right. And it's not, um, okay, you can see here where I got it on pretty thin. Um, let me pull you guys down. Can you see that orangish is, um, okay, Eileen's saying be careful when you buy frisket. It's bad. Yeah, because see, this is, I mean, it's not been open and closed a bunch of time, and I'm not sure that I can, um, dilute this get usable again i'll try um it says do not apply to wet paper it has to dry completely before painting so you have to like be patient and wait for it to dry but then like when you're done watch how easy oh i was gonna paint on it duh and this isn't completely dry but you'll get the idea what I want you to see. It totally, totally resists the paint. God, that looks like a fungus. Let me dry this real quick. I'm not sure how this fits. If it turns yellow, it's bad. There you go. You've heard it from the expert. And I'm not sure if you even use a heat gun with it. Yeah, my uh, medicine's wearing off because I'm starting to snot up real. I was just happy I remembered to take it. All right, so that's kind of what it looks like. It looks a real mess. But then if you just take your finger and ball, and it, it does come off nice and clean. I will say that. When I've had to use it, it does come off really clean. So you can see how it will just repel your water. Chinese Eggman. <laughs> All right. Now I'm getting blurry picture. But now you know how frisket kind of works. Um... Yeah, and there's like, I don't think there's really much residue. If you, let me see, this, they make such a thing as, uh, it's called a rubber cement eraser. You can also use it to erase so you have zero residue left. So that's what this is. And these are cheap, you know, I probably bought this one a buck and a quarter 30 years ago. I just keep it in with my other erasers. I don't hardly ever use it anymore. So, yeah, then you can go back in. Let's see if we put another coat of paint on what we end up getting. 
you see this paper is garbage because it actually roughed up the paper which isn't horrible either I mean that's some nice texture it's either frisket that's left or where it's really buggered up the paper this was not the best paper in the world thanks for coming Val so all right we either have created something awesome or we've absolutely ruined a two-hour painting which I don't care either way let me get that frisket off the end of that uh, yeah my head's starting to really fill up right now that medicine makes a huge difference <sighs> Yes, Carla, if you get a fresh batch, it does come thin enough to use in a fine liner bottle. And a lot of people use it that way so they can dip it, whatever, and do really, really fine areas. Yes, I've seen it used like that, Carla. Eileen's saying the ones in the fine liner bottles are the ones that go bad mostly. But yeah, I have seen people use it in the fine liner bottles. But my feeling is if, if you buy it and it goes bad, or if it's bad when you buy it, turn around and take it back. All right, I'm going to pull this back over. This I just have to let, let sit now, anything about it. I don't know. See how that green got in those? Unless I'm able to... Okay, I want to go in there and start dinking around right now, but the truth of the matter is it would be if I just left it alone right now. But that's the problem with using magicals on this is um, I got it there on those petals, and so it's the painting itself is not really well defined. So... If I could use the frisket on the rest of the earth, or if I can paint the flower where it looks, and see, I know better than to do this. That green, it's a different colored green for sure, Eileen. Yeah, see where it went in the flower? I'm not going to be happy with that, you guys. I'm really not. So I don't know. That may be asking more than this goofball can do. <clears throat> so I might have to do the whole painting over, but that's okay because I got nothing but time for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to get my new windshield, so I'll be gone all day. I think clearer than it looks, I mean, it's prettier than it looks on camera. Like that, on camera that looks really gross. It's kind of a yellow, yellowy green. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to like it, but we'll find out. So... Oh, I call it a day, you guys. I've done all the damage I can do. I'm going to redraw this, I think. We tried. Live and learn. The painting was fun. Oh, okay. I'm going to have a hard time breathing now. So, um, it did look good. I know, maybe. But maybe when I um, take the gauze and stuff off, which it really has to dry. Um, yeah, who knows? Maybe it'll look okay. Maybe it won't. All right, Jilly, Eileen, Joan, CB, Sharon, everybody, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you spending your Monday afternoon with me. And, um, I'll see you.
Thursdays. CB, if you want to come on with me and Dee Dee, you should do that. Or anybody. Norma, I'd love for you to volunteer to come on with us. So, yeah, just keep in mind, if you want to come on and hang with Dee Dee and I and just chat and art for a little while, we'd like that. So, you guys go have fun. Be kind. The world needs more kindness right now. We're losing our minds. And I love you guys a lot. And I'll see you Thursday. Bye now.